Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I know um, many of you, but my name is Melissa Taylor. I'm the Director of Strategic Long Range Planning for the Regional Planning Agency. And the Regional Planning Agency staff, the Transportation Planning Organization, or the TPO, as we call it for short, uh, the TPO staff is responsible for developing and carrying out the regional transportation plan process, which is why you're all here today. And I want to thank each of you for taking the time to join us and welcome you to the first Community Advisory Committee meeting of the 2050 Regional Transportation Plan. The Advisory Committee has been a critical part of our past plans and the participation of this group has contributed significantly to progress we've made in transportation um, or for the transportation system in the greater Chattanooga, Hamilton County, North Georgia area. Um, your role over the next uh, year and a half uh, will be to provide assistance to our staff and consultant team um, to provide uh, meaningful input on a variety of topics, which means that you might need to spend a little bit more time becoming familiar uh, than the average person with some of uh, the topics that we share with you. Um, and then we ask that you help us spread the word about this process, uh, sharing the website, encouraging people to get involved, um, to attend meetings, um, and to be sure that we're asking people to give meaningful input. Um, next slide. Um, as the project manager for uh, this plan and several plans in the past, um, I know public engagement provides the added justification to help us prioritize limited funding. There is never enough money to program everyone's desire. So early and often, uh, public engagement ensures we are making the best choices for our area. Uh, we don't always get the amount of involvement that we'd like, um, or we sometimes feel that maybe that involvement isn't uh, representative of all the various sectors of our community from urban to rural. So we keep improving what we do and how we do it. And I'm really excited. We've, we've introduced a lot of new tools to this regional transportation plan process and excited to introduce you to um, Caroline Daigle on my team. Uh, she will be heading up and leading our public engagement efforts. Uh, she is a master at uh, simplifying complex topics and has a true passion for helping uh, everyday citizens become civic partners. Um, so I think this committee and our outreach efforts will be in um, great hands with her. Uh, she has uh, taken on the education campaign that we rolled out last year. So you may have seen some of those materials and if not, um, you'll find them on our website, which uh, Caroline also almost single-handedly stood up just in the last like two months um, to get us going on this project and make sure that um, we didn't have too much delay in, uh, in getting the, the project and our efforts for the CAC meeting underway. So Caroline, I'm gonna let you introduce the planning team and get our presentation rolling. Thank you so much, Melissa, um, and welcome again, everyone, to the first Community Advisory Committee for the 2050 uh, RTP, Regional Transportation Plan. We're so glad to have you all here today. Um, so I'm just going to go through some quick introductions of the RTP planning team. Um, like Melissa said, I'm Caroline Daigle. I'm with the RPA, and I'll be um, leading community engagement for the RTP. Um, I'm going to go through the rest of our uh, planning team as shown on the slide here, um, and then we'll uh, talk about how the participants can introduce themselves. So I'll hand it over to um, Betsy uh, Evans on the RPA team. Hello, Betsy Evans. I'm a senior transportation planner under Melissa, and I am working on the environmental and resilience parts of the plan. Thanks, Betsy. Uh, next, I'll uh, let you and Lee introduce yourself. You and if you can unmute uh, to introduce. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Yun Lee, Director of Research and Analysis. My team is responsible for the congestion management and the intelligent transportation system and also for the uh, travel demand models. Thanks so much, Yuan. Um, now we'll move over to our consultant team partners for the RTP, starting with Modern Mobility Partners and Kelly Kemp. Good afternoon. 
Uh, my name is Kelly Kemp. I'm one of the owners of Modern Mobility Partners, and I am the consultant project manager for the 2050 RTP. Thanks so much, Kelly. Uh, next is Julia. Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Billings with Modern Mobility Partners, um, and I am deputy project manager to Kelly uh, on the consultant side on this project. Thank you, Julia. Uh, now we'll move, move to WSP. We've got Emily. Good afternoon, uh, Emily Ritzler with WSP and I lead our planning and environment team. And we're looking forward to working with everybody on the environmental and resilience components of the plan. Thank you, Emily. Um, now we've got Christy with WSP. Hello everyone, Christy John with WSP. I am a planner traffic engineer and we are supporting UN's team to update congestion management process. Nice to meet you all. Thanks, Christy. Now we'll move over to Arcadis. Do we have a uh, Luke with us today? Nope, Luke is not present today, but this is Jaap Tiegelaar. I am present. <laughs> Thank you. And Arcadis is a subconsultant to Modern Mobility Partners and helping with uh, various aspects of the plan. So those are just some of the faces that you'll see throughout this planning process, just so you know kind of who is who. Um, with our planning team, we're really excited about uh, the team that we've been able to put together. Um, so going to the next slide, uh, Julia. Um, I also wanted to just kind of acknowledge the breadth of who all has been invited to participate in this community advisory committee meeting. And we've got 54 participants on the line today, which is awesome. Um, in the interest of time, we're not going to have all of the meeting participants verbally introduce yourselves, but uh, I do encourage you to use the chat box to just kind of introduce yourself there and say your name and the organization uh, that you work with or that you represent, um, just so folks can kind of get, a, get an idea of who's in the virtual room with us today. Um, and just the slide here just shows the list of organizations and entities that were invited to participate in this committee. And um, we're really excited about the diversity reflected um, from this committee and from the different um, areas of practice that, that these community leaders and stakeholders are coming from. So I know some folks on the call might be, you know, transportation gurus and thinking about things like pavement and traffic lanes and engineering, you know, on a day to day basis, but others of you might be coming from a social services perspective or a nonprofit background and thinking about transportation through different lens and and all of that is really valuable and we're just super excited about having these different perspectives in the room together and and dialoguing together throughout the rest of this planning process so i'm really excited to have you all here today thanks for introducing yourselves in the chat box um and um with that i'll go over um just briefly our agenda for the meeting thanks julia um, so this slide is just a, an overview of what to expect for today's meeting. Um, first, we're going to jump into an overview of the RTP. So what is this regional transportation plan thing? You know, some of you might be really familiar with it. Some of you may have not heard of it before. So we're just going to give an overview of kind of the purposes of this plan and, and what it uh, sets out to do. Then we'll break into uh, breakout groups for a whiteboard um, activity. So we'll give you all the information that you need. Uh, for how to access that and participate in it, but we'll do uh, breakout rooms and have an activity. Um, then we'll come all back together, share um, outcomes from our activity, and then go over the uh, goals and objectives for the plan. So kind of looking at, you know, some of the big issues that the RTP will focus on. Uh, after that, we'll have one more activity um, that we'll all do together instead of in breakout groups. Um, and then we'll come back together for a Q&A session at the end. So we're really looking forward to an interactive uh, dialogue sort of meeting. Um, you know, a couple logistic things. If any questions come up during the meeting, just throw them into the chat box and one of our team members will um, get you a response. And if it's, you know, a more uh, involved question, we might just hold it to the end for Q&A. But we'll definitely, one way or another, address any questions that come up. Um, so with that, I'm going to kick us off with a quick icebreaker just to get, um, you know, after lunch, get everybody, you know, uh, awake and ready to participate in today's meeting. So um, we're going to be using menti.com for a couple different uh, questions like sprinkled throughout the uh, presentation today. I think some folks might be familiar with it, but if you're not, um, it's very uh, straightforward. If you just open um, a browser window and go to www.menti.com. Um, and then enter the code on the screen here. That's 9833-2424. Um, so if you just go to menti.com and then enter the code when it prompts you, it's 
2424. And there will be a, um, an icebreaker question that you're presented with there, just asking, were you involved in the last RTP? So the last um, major uh, update to the RTP was the 2040 RTP, um, which was around 2013, 2014. Um, but then we had a, a more minor update in 2019 for our 2045 RTP. So any or all of those, you know, if you just kind of think back to your involvement with transportation planning in our region um, and answer, you know, is this RTP thing something new to you or, or is it familiar and it's something that you were involved with in the past? And that'll just give us kind of a sense of who's in the room today and, and levels of familiarity with, with the plan. So I'll give everyone a few more seconds to respond to that, Minty. Um, looks like we've got the live results showing up on the slide here, 50-50 exactly right now. That's awesome. Um, so we've got a lot of folks that are returning to this process, um, as well as a lot of newcomers. So really exciting to see uh, that breakdown. Looks like we still have a couple answers uh, trickling in on that Minty question. Right about 50-50. That, that might be what we were expecting, but that's exciting to see. So we've got um, all different perspectives in the group today. Um, so that was just an icebreaker question to get everyone familiar with Minty, um, and we'll be using that a couple more times during the presentation. And with that, I'm just going to go ahead and hand it over to Kelly to get into the RTP overview. Thanks, Caroline. So um, we are excited to get the 2050 Regional Transportation Plan, or RTP, as we've been referring to, referring to it as, um, started. So it is a long-range transportation plan. It has a 25-year horizon. All plans are federally required to maintain at least a 20-year horizon um, and be updated every five years or four years, depending upon their air quality status. Um, as part of the regional transportation plan, that's where we identify the community goals and priorities for different types and levels of transportation investments. So that's transportation across all modes, whether it's transit, bicycle, pedestrian, roadway, freight, et cetera. Um, and then as part of that, it includes an analysis of what our existing transportation landscape looks like or the existing conditions. Um, and then projections or forecasts of what we can expect in the future um, all the way out to 2050. So, and then what we do is we program federal funds for transportation projects in the region based on a pretty robust project evaluation and prioritization process um, that we'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, one thing that we like to stress is that it is a plan. It does not guarantee funding um, for the implement, implementation of projects, but we do fiscally constrain the plan for those that we do prioritize for investment. So it's important that everyone um, be a part of the development of that, that prioritization process and have ownership in it. Uh, next, I want to talk a little bit about the TPO or the Transportation Planning Organization itself, which is housed within the Regional Planning Agency. Um, the TPO covers about 470,000 people um, as of 2019. Uh, we've got just under 2,800 lane miles in the region. And if you look at the pie chart on the top right, those are our trips by mode. So about 84% of people in 2015 uh, drove alone. Um, obviously, a lot more people are teleworking right now during COVID, and it'll be interesting to see how that trend tracks in the future. 8% uh, were carpooling, 7% were either walking, biking, or telecommuting back then with 1% public transit. Now, it should be noted that we're going to be updating these statistics as part of the 2050 RTP. So these were from the last uh, plan update for 2045. Um, most transportation projects in the region receive some form of federal funding. And so whenever there's federal funding involved, it flows through the transportation planning organization process. And typically, the share of federal funding for a transportation project is 80%, give or take, depending upon the type of funding and the type of project. Um, but sometimes projects are 100% locally funded as well. Next slide. 
So we have a lot of partners with the PPO. At the federal level, we have the Federal Highway Administration and the Federal Transit Administration. They're both under the umbrella of the U.S. Department of Transportation. At the state level, we have the Tennessee and Georgia Departments of Transportation. Uh, we also have CARTA, the transit agency in Chattanooga, uh, the Chattanooga Airport Authority, Air Pollution Control Bureau, and the um, County Hamilton County Railroad Authority. We've got four counties, Hamilton on the Tennessee side and uh, Catoosa, Walker, and Dade counties on the Georgia side, and then 15 local municipalities. So there's a lot of partners involved um, in this, in the TPO, and that will be collaborated with throughout the RTP. Uh, so we're going to take another uh, minty break. It should be the same code that you had before. So you can just go back to your minty.com. The code is also at the top of the screen, 9833-2424. And so we want to do a little uh, word cloud here. If you have one word, one word that you had to think about, what comes to mind when you think about transportation? Freedom. I love that. Confusing, yes, it can be. Mobility. Inaccessible. Access, coordination, independence. Movement. Convenience, choice, traffic. Pollution efficient. So the larger the word, the more people have entered that word. Um, so, so far, most people have entered either mobility, access, or freedom. And we've had about 31 people participate so far. We've got 57 on the line. So I want to give a another minute or so for people to participate. Movement and choice are moving up in the ranks. All right, so um, mobility, freedom, and access. I like that. Yep. Okay. So, um, so obviously, we want to think about that as we go into our exercises as well. Um, but I think it's interesting that people brought up freedom because that's we've been talking a lot about that internally as well. The more mobility options we can provide to people, the more freedom they have to move about the region and increase their, what we refer to as their travel shed. But if they have more mobility options and all of a sudden they can go further within say 30 minutes than they could before, that's a pretty big deal and provides some more freedom. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the overall schedule for the RTP. We kicked off internally um, earlier this year, um, uh, back in January-ish, but this is our first uh, community advisory committee meeting. Uh, we'll have a series of public engagement activities throughout the life of the RTP, which is scheduled for adoption um, in January of 2024. Uh, that seems like a long way away, but it is going to get here fast and there's a lot to do between now and then. Um, I'm going to let Caroline, when she gets there, to talk about more of the engagement opportunities. But we will have a series of four CAC meetings. This group um, will meet three more times after this, and I'll talk about that shortly in a minute as well. We have a robust performance planning framework where we look at how are we going to um, not only evaluate projects for consideration for funding, but also how do we measure their performance in the transportation system as a whole for the plan? And then even beyond the plan, monitoring the plan and its performance once projects are implemented. So how, what are the benefits of those projects and those investments? Uh, we look at existing conditions and trends. Uh, what we refer to here as alternate futures or planning for the unknown. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. We also look at what are some of the needs and opportunities uh, for transportation investments. And then we come up with what projects we want to evaluate, get feedback on those projects, 
um, on whether they're a good project to evaluate. Then we evaluate them and prioritize them and come up with that fiscally constrained plan where some of the projects get into the funded portion of the plan and some of them get on a kind of a wish list or an illustrative list should um, further funding become available in the future, which does sometimes happen and then they move up into, into the plan. And then we'll have a draft and final RTP report. Our draft report will be coming back to this CAC group in the spring of 23, so two years from now. We'll get feedback from you guys, and then it will go to our state and federal partners for a review process, um, as well as the public, and, and then adoption in January 24. So regarding the four CAC meetings, so today um, we we're talking about, you know, the vision goals and priorities. Um, uh, Caroline's going to talk about the work that we've already done on community resources, equity emphasis areas, and level of traffic stress as it relates to cycling. Um, and then we're going to have another meeting in the July, August time, time frame with you guys to talk about the results of our existing conditions analysis and what we plan to show to the public at the end of August. So anytime we go out to the public with something, we're going to come to this group first before we have any public meetings. Um, and then in March of 22, we'll have our third CAC meeting where we'll go over future demand or projections, um, projects that we've identified for evaluation and more detail on the planning for, for the unknown concepts. We'll talk a little bit about those today and get your input. Um, and then we will have gotten further along on some of those in a deeper dive. And we'll talk about those in more detail, followed by a public meeting the month after that CAC meeting. And then lastly, we'll have a CAC meeting in July of 22, where we'll talk about the complete results for the planning and for the unknown, as well as the results of the project evaluation and our preliminary recommendations, followed by going out to the public in August of 22. So Caroline, I'm gonna let you talk about some of the engagement opportunities and what's been done so far. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so like Kelly said, this uh, plan, it's a little bit different from something like a comprehensive plan or an area plan in that it takes, a, it's a two to three year horizon. So it, it's kind of, it feels like a long time, um, but we really are hoping that folks will kind of track with us throughout the plan development process and stay engaged uh, throughout that process. So um, to that end, we have a project website stood up for the 2050 RTP. Um, right now you can uh, go to the website. Um, I'm going to have Melissa drop the link into the chat box if um, folks want to open it up. I think it's also um, been in a couple emails. It's on our RPA website. The URL is on the screen here. Um, so please uh, do check out the project website. Um, if you haven't already, there are a couple different um, input opportunities already live on that website. And this is going to be kind of where things live for the duration of the plan. So as we are coming out with new analyses, as we have you know, outcomes documented from uh, public meetings or from surveys that are done, everything's gonna live on this website for the 2050 RTP. And we're excited about this. It's the first time for an RTP that we've had like a dedicated web page like this. Um, and it's just exciting for us to be able to present information in that format and have it be a little bit more digestible uh, for folks that you know don't deal with this every day. So do bookmark the website um, and spend some time on there um, if you haven't already. A couple of things that I wanted to highlight that are on the website right now um, under the, I think both under the Get Involved tab and on the um, Map Stories tab, we have a couple of um, map stories or story maps, you can call it either one, whichever sounds better, um, about a couple different areas of the plan that we've already started work on. And so these are basically like blog posts that will walk you through an issue. Um, the three that are on there right now, there's one about our work around identifying equity emphasis areas in the region, um, one about our work around identifying uh, community resources, so these kind of essential destinations um, in our region, and then one about uh, 
uh, work around identifying high stress areas for walking or biking um, on our transportation network. So again, the, the map stories are kind of like blog posts. You can kind of read through a little bit of what we've done already. And then for the, all three of those, at the end of the story, there's a feedback form where you can kind of help contribute to the data set of, um, you know, for example, community resources. You know, are we missing a destination um, in our region that we need to kind of account for? Um, so that we have that in our data set later on when we're evaluating projects, similar with equity emphasis areas. Is there, you know, a portion of our community that the census data didn't, didn't capture, didn't pick up as kind of an area to have a, a specific equity lens um, on when we're looking at transportation proposals in that area? And if so, like we want folks to be able to contribute to that as well. Um, and then with the levels of traffic stress, just kind of tell us about where you've got issues walking and biking in the region. You know, where is it stressful? Where is there maybe you know, a gap between uh, sidewalks that you rely on, um, just anything that kind of contributes to identifying those uh, high stress areas for uh, walking and biking. Um, and in those map stories, it kind of explains how we're gonna be using all of that information later on in the plan. So um, we're not doing just online engagement. You know, we're excited with the, the summer months coming up and the warm weather rolling around and kind of with the, the state of um, the pandemic right now, we're looking forward to being able to be outdoors and attending some community events over the summer to help spread the word uh, even more about the plan and get folks to respond to the survey that we'll talk about in a little bit. So do look forward to kind of seeing us pop up around town um, and around the region. Uh, throughout the summer, but um, I did really just want to highlight the project website and the uh, couple of feedback opportunities that are live on there right now. If you have any questions about anything on the website or finding things or using the link or sharing it, just feel free to reach out to me at any point. Um, and with that, we are going to hand it back over to Kelly to go through some of the focus areas of the plan. All right, so every plan um, required as part of the federal regulations um, has some foundational elements, a lot of which we already talked about as part of the schedule, your existing conditions analysis and your future conditions and your needs and opportunities and projects for evaluation and then fiscal constraint. But above and beyond that, these are some areas that we're focusing on and giving extra attention to um, for the 2050 plan. The first thing that we're doing is we are threading the movement of people and goods throughout the entirety of the plan. So we're not separating freight out to um, a separate freight profile and isolating it in one place. We're making sure that it's threaded throughout because our end goal is to move people and goods. Um, and so that's threaded throughout the, the plan and, and we're doing a pretty robust effort there. Uh, Caroline already mentioned equity emphasis areas, which are areas um, based on low-income minority, elderly and disabled communities, um, and um, so it's essentially environmental justice populations and making sure that we're improving mobility, access, safety, and freedom um, to these equity emphasis areas throughout. Resilience is another topic that we were fortunate enough, the Chattanooga TPO was the recipient of a Federal Highway Administration Resilience Pilot Workshop that was held recently. And we were um, able to participate in that and we're going to be integrating it into the transportation plan. And that essentially looks at, you know, what happens if we have extreme flooding, how do we protect our transportation assets or pandemics, et cetera. Uh, smart corridors we're going to be looking at as well. So that's related to connecting vehicles to each other, to the traffic signals and back to the transportation management center and identifying a proactive smart corridor network. That also relates to electric vehicle charging infrastructure. We're doing a pretty robust EV analysis given the increasing rate of EVs that are expected throughout the life of this RTP which then leads us to the planning for the unknown, which we're looking at eight different um, planning for the unknown considerations. Uh, we'll be talking about those as part of our mural exercise soon, but very briefly, uh, we are gonna be looking at, okay, driverless vehicles or autonomous vehicles and what their impacts could be. 
I mentioned electric vehicles. What happens if teleworking sustains itself post COVID? Uh, what could the impacts be on congestion and mobility if there was more rural development? Uh, the rising e-commerce, um, you know, impacts on truck parking needs and congestion, et cetera. What happens if the share of cargo um, moves from more from truck to rail and related to resilience, the climate change, and then related to pandemics and others, you know, economic downturns. And so what we're going to be doing is looking at all eight of these, but then figuring out which ones do we really want to focus on based on their anticipated impacts, negative or positive, on transportation. And so we're going to get your input on that as part of the exercise. Now I'm going to hand it over to Emily uh, to mention what they're going to be doing with Pell and Arlene. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, one of the things that we're doing with this RTP, which is going to be great, is instituting um, planning and environmental linkages, often referred to as PEL. And the purpose for PEL, especially in this process, is really looking at streamlining efforts um, that can be used not just in this process, but later as projects move forward to be delivered as well. And what we'll be looking at are identifying environmental resources and what potential effects um, might be to the environment based on projects that are identified. Kelly mentioned earlier when she was going through the, the statistics about how many numbers of projects receive federal funding. And federal funding really triggers the National Environmental Policy Act, often referred to as NEPA. And NEPA is a process that we go through with federally funded projects. There's other triggers as well, but mostly federally funded projects to um, assess the environmental conditions and can sometimes be, be seen as a process that takes a long time or it's difficult for projects to move through. And by incorporating NEPA in, and environmental documentation in the planning process, what we can do is find ways to accelerate that process and look for ways to reduce duplication in the planning efforts um, into the environmental process. And it's really about a collaborative approach to have some of that early environmental information on projects before it moves to that next phase. And it's also about documenting the information we have and what we've assessed for effects so that we can use that information, again, to reduce that duplication, but also have the information ready on decisions that um, have collaboratively been made in the planning process so that we're not revisiting those decisions later on. And when we look at the early NEPA phases, um, that's also about starting that initial communication, having a really strong foundation for what a project justification might look like and what the purpose and need for that project is and begin the communication on specific projects about what the environmental process will be and how that project can be delivered. And the benefits are that are really understanding what the cost would be for projects, what the overall process would be, and how intense of an environmental process we might be looking at in the next phases. So by bringing this in early, we're looking forward to bringing that into the decision-making on projects for the overall RTP. With that, I'll turn it over to Christy to talk about congestion management. Thanks, Emily. So congestion is one of the important topics that RTP team will, will take a look through the process. So TPO is updating congestion management process update and which is a federally required process. And it is also part of the, the broader RTP process. So as part of CMP update, we're going to take a closer look at the existing conditions. So, and identify where are the top congested corridors. And really we would like to identify a suite of solutions and strategies to mitigate you know, current and future conditions. And this information will be fed into the RTP process. So when the RTP team evaluates and prioritize projects, they will know, you know which project and which strategies are more effective to mitigate regional con congestion. So back to Caroline or Kelly. Okay. So we're gonna take you back to Minty, um, 9833 So if you had your druthers and you controlled the transportation budget, um, how would you spend your money? 
So you would spend more money on, and so, yeah, so we're thinking about like the different types of projects. Um, transit is one I see. Yeah, public transportation, trains, truck lanes. Okay, and you can enter more than one here as well. I should mention uh, lots on public transit, uh, regional public transportation plans, street grid improvements, trails, multimodal transportation. Julia, could you scroll down so we can maybe see What's on the bottom? Yeah, because more is populating there. Technology, paratransit, greenways, better interstate access to and through Chattanooga, access to transportation for all areas of the county, connections to allow more route options, complete streets, lighting. Yeah, I don't think people always realize how important the lighting is along infrastructure. Um, those roadways as well as bike ped lanes, transit uh, stations and bus stops and everything is very important. Um, I'm assuming that lightning is lighting as well. <laughs> I hope so. Um, low income community access, yep. Support for transportation for people with disabilities who cannot drive, blind, roll, et cetera. Maintenance infrastructure improvements, greenways, Okay, this is good stuff. This is extremely helpful. Thank you. Let's move on to the next question. Um, when thinking about the environment in the regional transportation plan, which two areas would you like to learn more about? So Emily talked about this already. Um, the National Environmental Policy Act is an option, NEPA. Would you like to learn more about environmental data sources, selection of screening criteria, potential effects and mitigation strategies, defining project purpose and need, resource degradation or wildlife concerns? So you get to pick two. You should have a pull down menu when you're selecting. Um, looks like potential effects and mitigation strategies are of strong interest. Uh, followed by defining project purpose and needs so far. That's good. Um, okay. Resource degradations, trailing behind. I'll give some folks more time to respond. Potential effects and mitigation strategies seems to be a strong number one. So that's helpful having one out there that's really leading um, and I think that'll really be helpful for Emily and her team to figure out what to focus on and, and share with you guys as far as education and awareness opportunities. Okay, so potential effects and mitigation strategies, and it looks like defining project purpose and need is following behind. So folks are still answering. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Thank you, that's helpful. Um, so from here, I'm gonna hand it over to Julia to talk about the vision and goals. All right, thanks, Kelly. Um, yeah, so in the images in the, in the slide, you can see people gathered around a table and using sticky notes and giving their input in person like we used to do, um, but Today we're in a virtual environment, so we're going to do some activities um, using Mural to, to get your input. But before we get started, I want to kind of give an overview of what that input informs. So um, one of the critical things for the RTP process is achieving a shared vision. And that's a long term big picture vision for the future of the area um, that we kind of collectively craft and aligns with the goals and objectives and project evaluation criteria. There are also seven national goal areas that the plan must address. And those are safety and security, system maintenance, congestion reduction, freight movement and economic vitality, environmental sustainability, system reliability and project delivery. And so these have to align with the vision and, a, and a, um, 
align with our ultimate project evaluation criteria. But we also want to hear from you what else is needed, what of these are more important than others, um, and, and develop those evaluation criteria to make sure that projects are scored and weighted such that the, the more important aspects receive more weight um, and are therefore implemented sooner. So that's what these next exercises will inform. Um, so the first activity we're going to do in, in the mural, and I, we had sent out a demo link, so some of you may have, and I think looking at it, it looks like some people have tried it out, which is great. Um, I'm going to drop a link to the, the first, well, to the mural demo into the chat box. So if you want to take a look, um, feel free to open it up. And I'm just going to provide a quick little demo um, to show you how mural works before we actually start um, asking for your input. So let me switch over to Mural. And can everybody see the Mural example? All right, awesome. So I see a visiting hippopotamus. I see some various animals in here. It assigns you a little icon once you join in. You can put your name if you want, but you don't have to. Um, one thing to mention is that it does not work in Internet Explorer. So use another browser um, if that's your usual browser. Um, like Edge or Chrome or, or really any other one. Um, so it looks like people are figuring it out. Basically, you can zoom in and out. You can pan around by just clicking and dragging. Um, as you click and drag, others will, will not see what you're seeing. Um, so, you know, if I'm dragging it over here, you can see it on my shared screen, but on your mural, it won't, it'll show your extent. So um, play with that a little bit. You can just use your mouse to zoom in and out. So scrolling in, zooms in, scrolling out, zooms out. And then sticky notes are a critical part. So if you double click, you can add a sticky. Uh, you can make them smaller, you can make them bigger, you can move them around by just clicking on them. Pretty simple. And then to write in the sticky note, you just click inside and add your text. And you also have some other options if you want to change any fonts or anything like that or colors. And then lastly, you can move icons around. So in this example, we can just drag little check marks um, wherever you like. Um, OK, so that was that was really all I wanted to show you is just how it works before we get into the real one. So our, our first activity, sorry, I'm going to go back to the uh, to the slide, we're actually going to break into groups for the first activity. Um, so once we get into our groups, there will be three groups. You'll get a, a link to your mural board. Um, and then we'll spend about 18 to 20 minutes um, collecting some feedback and then reconvene together and report back. So um, Caroline, if you want to just uh, assign us to our groups, we'll, um, we'll see everyone in about 20 minutes. All right, um, I'm going to split us up into breakout groups. Each group will have a facilitator, but it might take a few seconds for everyone to get settled. So just hold tight if you get in the room and there is not a facilitator yet. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and split us up to three different breakout groups. And keep in mind, once you receive your link, it may take a moment to, uh, to populate. So just be patient while the page loads. It, it will load. Um, but sometimes it takes a few seconds. Thanks, Julia. All right, I'm opening the breakout room. Um, we're just going to report back quickly from each group the um, the headlines. Um, we'll just keep it to the headline uh, outcome for now since we're running a little tight on time um, and leave the, the planning for the unknown uh, discussion um, separate. So don't worry, our project teams have your feedback on that, but um, we'll just have everyone share the headlines real quick. I'm um, starting with uh, group number one. So Kelly, who from your group is going to share the headline? Oh, it looks like you're on mute, Kelly. Oh, that's that's me. Oh, thanks, Michael. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so our headline was uh, regionally interconnected high speed train paired with diverse last mile mobility options provides faster, safer and cleaner travel choices for Chattanoogans. Awesome. That's a great headline. That sounds like a great potential future that we could see here. All right. Um, group number two, who is your point person for reporting back on your headline? 
And you might need to unmute. Oh, um, we didn't, we didn't um, <laughs> select a person. So I'm going to report back for us. Yeah, um, go ahead. Our, our headline was affordable access for all. Awesome. Short and sweet. Good job, group two. And then finally, from uh, group three, we've got Jenny Park is going to report our uh, headline. So our headline was infrastructure largely driven by new funding mechanisms, new model, fundamental shift. Um, and we have some other just topics, Log logistics, reduction of private automobile ownership and interconnected logistics system. We, did, we didn't polish it as nicely as um, some of the other groups did, but thanks, Jenny. Uh, yeah, those are uh, really great ideas to hear from everyone, and I hope that kind of gets the creative juices flowing to think a little bit about, you know, this long-term vision for investing in um, our region's transportation network. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to, who is it going to now? Back to Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. Oh, back to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Uh, Julia, Caroline Kelly for facilitating those breakout groups. Um, as you can all see, Mural is a great way to um, hear what everyone's thinking, um, get your ideas out um, on a board and, um, and then facilitate some sort of um, consensus about what the group is thinking. So I think that's a, a great tool that we have to use now. And thinking about all of those needs, I mean, regardless of of which need it is, uh, we do have to prioritize, as I mentioned earlier. And um, being engaged uh, earlier than later uh, with our public uh, partners and this group together is really important to get us trying to um, sort through what those priorities are gonna be. Um, in, the, in 2014, um, for our 2040 plan, which I think several of you attended back then, uh, the, the community advisory committee and the public told us that everything was important. Um, some of you may remember a pie chart that literally resulted in seven project categories ranking equally in terms of what people thought was needed. And however, uh, thinking about all of those categories, um, the smaller projects for uh, many of those categories like a resurfacing project or uh, an intersection improvement or even a crosswalk um, had really no way of competing uh, with larger scale projects because typically we're, you know, we're looking at those larger projects that seem to get the most attention. And due to a standardized kind of methodology, um, those other projects weren't really able to measure up um, in the ranking or scoring. So not only do we see a need to create a, a new way of um, off-model kind of calculating or providing a calculator for how those smaller projects fare, uh, we also needed to look more at the purpose of projects um, because projects are designed to accommodate uh, different modes and at different scales um, to address needs within a community to those between like other communities. So when you're moving from a community to another community or you're moving from region to region, the scale of the project or the design of the project is different. I'm sorry, my cat is. <laughs> um, so for instance, a crosswalk in downtown or a bike path uh, would likely be designed for safety while other projects may be designed for expedited transit service to carry more people, um, or a roadway project that is designed to handle heavier traffic or higher automobile speeds to ensure that efficient movement of people and goods from across our region to even other regions. Each purpose is clearly, should be clearly defined and it should be different. And that purpose of a project should play a more important role in scoring and evaluating projects. And therefore, a colleague and I in 2014 came up with this, this image, this idea of scaling the purpose of the project and tagging each project as it's requested into the process to get a better sense of what was the intended purpose of the project. And the goals are nested under each of these thin scales. 
Um, that way, all projects that come in are evaluated on their purpose and it helps to allow those smaller projects to compete with even much larger projects. Um, the entire method methodology works and actually won a national uh, award from the Federal Highway and Transit Administrations in 2015. And it was updated in our 2045 plan, which is the plan that's current now. Um, however, as we move into this very new 2050 plan, we wanna make sure and vet that you know, this is still a good way of evaluating projects. And we thought the best way to do that would be to vet that with all of you. Uh, we're interested in your opinions and we do think things change. So maybe this needs to be tweaked a little or maybe you all have additional ideas about how we can use um, the system to our advantage. So um, we think that it's a flexible um, structure for nesting and prioritizing the goals and objectives related to the modes we use, uh, the issues currently facing our community as you guys just brainstormed about, as well as other transportation related factors that we need to consider. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn things um, back over to Caroline and Julia to facilitate our next mural exercise um, that we'll do collectively as a large group. Thanks, Melissa. Um, Julia, can you go ahead and enter the link in the chat box? Thanks. So this this one will be more straightforward and more and, and quicker. Uh, there's a link at the end of the chat box from Julia to a new mural board that we're all going to be in together. Um, I'm, we're going to skip question number one in the interest of time. You guys will get to respond to that question uh, in a survey later on during the summer. And let's all focus in on uh, the to the transportation issues. That's um, where Julia is kind of highlighted on the screen there. So these things all relate to each other, right? Like what Melissa was describing with the scales um, is relating to the issue, the biggest issues that we see in our region's transportation network right now. So um, just to give some context, we are going to be doing a survey this summer, a public survey to get folks to respond to what are the biggest issues and then to help refine the goals and objectives that are in that framework that Melissa showed. So they're kind of a corollary, right? Like if a big issue that's identified from uh, the public is like, let's say a lack of public transit connections to destinations, um, then maybe an objective for our plan is to improve the uh, the accessibility of public transit in, uh, in key areas or improve, improve the accessibility of public transit to different destinations, right? And so they kind of go hand in hand. And the reason that this matters is because funding and that good money to pay for things that get built trickles down through this process. So we have unlimited needs and limited funds. So we have to prioritize projects. And when we do that, when we look at projects on the table for funding, we are looking at how do they perform on these different metrics within the scale where they're operating, right? Within community, community to region, region to region. How do they perform in terms of addressing these issues and helping us reach the objectives for our region? And the ones that perform best get ranked highest and can ultimately end up getting funding through the process. So um, with these green stickies, um, we just want you to kind of read through them and see, does anything look like it's missing? Like if we're, we've got 10 in the top row that we've kind of flagged as like, these are the big issues uh, that are most important for us to evaluate and understand in our region. Use one of the blank stickies to add something um, to that list. If you think something's missing that is not um, being highlighted as an issue uh, for our survey to get people to respond to. And keep in mind that this all relates to where money gets allocated, how funding uh, goes, flows through this process. So there's there's a lot of importance kind of hinging on uh, the, the issues that we identify and the objectives that we uh, craft in order to address those issues and, and get things done. Um, so take a few minutes to, um, it looks like folks are figuring it out, use a blank uh, green sticky if you wanna add an issue uh, for consideration there. And then after, um, after it looks like we've kind of slowed the pace there, I'm gonna have Julia open a voting session. Um, and this will just be to vote on, um, you know, which, which of those issues, including the new ones that people added, do you think are most important for us to kind of center as we are 
um, engaging in dialogue with, with members of our community about these investments and as we're crafting our project evaluation framework uh, for, for determining where funding goes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, I know some folks are still typing, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, have Julia open a voting session. It looks like we've got um, maybe some repeated ideas on there, so that's great. Um, and then just vote for the ones that you think are most important. And to vote on one, you just click on it. Just click on the sticky and that'll submit your vote. All right, the vote is open and you can pick up to 10. Thanks, Julia. I want to point out for those who are in group two, if, if you didn't cast your vote, um, it's still open. I'm going to drop the link back in the chat just to make sure everybody got their vote in, um, in group two on the previous exercise. Looks like we've got about 29 people voting right now. 30 people voting, awesome. All right. All right, should I end it? Yeah, go ahead and you can go ahead and end it. So we've got time for the last one. Um, and keep in mind that we'll have, um, you, you know, plenty of opportunity before the survey is finalized. We'll still send out a draft to this group. Um, so you'll have opportunity to comment on what ends up in there before it gets uh, released publicly. So the uh, results from the voting are shown on the screen here. It looks like we got a lot of votes for ancient infrastructure land use and development um, and um, need for transportation projects that improve access for underserved communities are the top three issues that um, folks were saying are most important for our region. Um, so the final activity um, here, and hopefully we can squeeze it in before time, but we might go a few minutes over three o'clock. Um, appreciate y'all being here if you have to leave early. Um, so the final is this number three, it's the image of the geographic scales that Melissa explained. So um, again, this came out of our, our plan from 2040 um, and it's been kind of a holdover since then and it's been a really good framework, but we just wanna vet it before going into this plan. Um, you know, we're, we're in a really different place uh, in our region today than we were 10 years ago and we wanna see you know, do you guys, the question basically here is, do you still think that this is a good framework to use for setting goals and objectives for the plan? Does it make sense to split up with these, you know, different geographic scales and evaluate plans based on, uh, or evaluate projects based on what they're doing um, at what scale in our region? Or, or do you think that a more kind of across the board, here are just goals and objectives for for investing um, our federal funds for all transportation projects and it's one set and that's what we use for everything or or should we stick with this sort of uh, scaled approach? Um, so you can read through the goals there um, if you didn't get a good sense of them from Melissa's presentation and then um, I'll have Julia go ahead and open the voting session um, using those blue uh, squares. There's the yes, no and not sure and you can just kind of vote and let us know um, does this still, does this, this is a question of, does this uh, framework still seem relevant to you? Is this still relevant for how we uh, evaluate projects? So we'll go ahead and have folks vote on that. So like we got about 25 people voting right now. And then as those votes are coming in, the last uh, thing over there, those pink sticky notes is just other ideas. If you um, already had time to digest everything we've thrown at you today and you say, hey, I've got, I've got an idea for an objective that I think should be added to the, you know, community to region scale if we stick with the scale framework or um, I, I really want to make sure that this, this thought I have about this one future thing is noted today. 
um, just use those. Um, if you're done voting, you can use the pink stickies over there to just add any other thoughts uh, related to um, the way that we're talking about issues and, and the skills um, and goals and objectives um, for the plan. So um, it looks like maybe most people have had the chance to vote for that one. Julia, if you wanna end the voting session. Looks like a, most people are saying yes and a couple not sure, but we don't have any flat out no's for the scaled framework. So that's good to hear. And um, like Melissa said in the chat, we'll keep the mural boards open for the next week if you um, want to be able to get back in there and, and add any additional thoughts. Um, I know we are at time, so um, if we want to stay, we can keep the mural page open for folks to continue um, adding thoughts. Like I said, they'll be live, um, but we did just want to give a really quick just next steps overview, um, what you can expect from us. This is the last slide, but just so you know who, who to get in contact with and what you can expect for the plan. Um, just as a reminder, visit the website and check out the um, feedback opportunities that are already live on there on the map stories page. Um, help us spread the word about the plan with your networks, with your neighbors, with your colleagues. You know, we just want to make sure that folks know that this is happening. Um, we're, we're really doing uh, our part to try to get the word out there, but we're also relying on our partners um, and, and this committee um, to help us spread the word and kind of champion the plan in the community. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can follow the Regional Planning Agency, Chattanooga Hamilton County Regional Planning Agency um, on Facebook and Twitter. And we're using the hashtag uh, Greater Chat 2050 RTP for this plan. Um, so be sure to share a post that you see from us on those platforms. And then finally, the next time that we'll convene this uh, community advisory committee will be in the late summer before our big public meeting in um, August. Um, and we'll kind of talk about some of the outcomes of, of initial analysis we did around the existing conditions in our region. So um, if anybody has any questions, we are um, able to stick on uh, for the next, um, however long you might need, but if otherwise, um, that is the end of our presentation. Um, you can send any comments to rtp at chattanooga.gov, email me, email Melissa, email Kelly. Um, we're, we're available to, to chat transportation at any, at any time with anyone on this call. And we just really appreciate everybody being here today and, and thank you for your participation. And before um, anyone uh, leaves too quickly, uh, we do have um, in order to satisfy some of our federal requirements and Thanks, make sure that we have a, um, a demographic distribution of um, working with our CAC and the public, we would ask you that you go to the Minty one more time. This is a separate one. Um, so go to the www.minty.com and enter that code 1317-1078. And I'll put it in the chat, but if you could go and do that, it's just some demographic questions um, that help us to document uh, the kind of cross section that we're getting out of our participation. This helps us improve and it also helps document for our federal partners that we are um, doing what we can to continue to engage everyone in the community that we can. So we would appreciate that. And I will put it in the chat box and you are welcome to put questions in the chat box and we'll just start looking at them. If anyone wants to stick around and ask questions or have a discussion about something, you're welcome to raise your hand as well. Thanks, Melissa. Sorry for almost forgetting about that last set of questions. We do appreciate it if y'all can uh, fill those out just to give us a sense of who's in the room. And I'm looking. Uh, um, Ewan, I will say, Ewan, I saw that you um, asked for folks to participate in the congestion survey. Um, I was clicking on that link and it did not work for me. So I am going to cut again the, um, the link just to the website that shows people where to go from our actual RPA website. So there might be something just wrong with that one link. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, it's on the um, um, Get Involved page of the RTP mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. What? Well, okay. I mean, I'm when I click on it, work. So it must be something. Yeah, we'll yeah. just we'll just direct people to the RTP website to make sure they can get to that um, survey as I well as the other feedback opportunities on there. 
I cut that in. I'm looking for questions. I know some people had um, requests for the community to region framework uh, image. We will be sending that out as a, as a follow up to this meeting. So you'll have that. And I would suggest bookmarking the mural board or boards so that you can revisit them. It's really easy in your browser to just hit the bookmark and then it'll take you back there. And again, we will keep those open so that you can continue to add comments uh, there and contribute to those boards. I know it is a lot to digest. Um, we have um, a lot that goes on in this planning process and we're, we're trying to do a better job kind of engaging early and getting the topics and the issues out there to everyone um, to be involved. And this is probably the larger of the community advisory committees that we've had. So again, I wanna say thank you to everyone for participating and sticking around for the bulk of the meeting. We really appreciate it. It does make a difference in the outcomes of this plan process. Yeah, Melissa, I just checked the chat box and there's no unanswered questions at this point. Okay. We're good. Great, thank you, Kelly. All right, um, I'm looking to see any raised hands, no raised hands. Okay. If no one else has any questions, then um, I'm going to cut one more time into the chat box, the um, plan website. So we'll leave you with that. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their afternoon. And again, thanks so much for um, participating today. And we look forward to our next meeting with you and um, any follow-up comments or um, discussion points that we may have with you over the next week. Um, as Caroline had mentioned, we are working on getting the public survey out. So some of your comments on the mural boards and um, mentions in the chat box may affect that survey. So we are going to be looking at uh, your responses to um, help us finalize the public survey. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. I think we've lost right. most of our participants. So thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye.